welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am so excited to be joining you today from the official Organize Advisor headquarters, which is really just my home office, but we gave it a fresh coat of paint. We've got a fun neon sign for the wall. Um, and I'm really excited to be in this kind of refreshed space in order to create content like this for you guys. Um, as you know, everything we do and create comes directly from advisor requests. So if you ever need anything, please reach out. Your wish is quite literally my command. And so if I don't personally have the answers and I don't claim to know them all, um, I have a bunch of great advisors all across the country that are ready and willing to help. Um, it's a great community to be a part of. And so I'm so excited to kind of jump into this next chapter with Organized Advisor, creating videos that directly answer the most commonly asked questions that we get as new advisors or even experienced advisors. Um, and so today's question came from an email that I got a couple days ago because I talk a lot about Canva. I, I talk about how it's great for cutouts and it's really useful in your journalism program for icons and resources and also teaching design. They have a whole design school that you can teach your students color theory and font pairings and uh, typography and all this sort of stuff that's really, really useful for teachers um, and journalism programs to create social media graphics and all these things. Um, so the question that I've been seeing, I got an email about and then I've been seeing in these Facebook groups too, is, is Canva something that my students can use to create their entire yearbook pages? Um, you know, they're already in Canva using it for other resources, maybe other classes. They're familiar with online um, interfaces like this. It's easy to use. It's user friendly for like middle schoolers or beginning students in yearbook. Is it something we can use to create our entire yearbook with? Um, and unfortunately, I personally think the answer is no, and I'm going to go into why, but I also think that it's really, really great for other things. And so it's not something that you should throw out the window. I definitely think it's worth getting your account. Um, as a teacher, you get a free pro account. You just have to go sign up and put your email in. If your district has already been approved, it's a really fast verification. If it hasn't, it might take a couple of days for them to approve you, but you know, it's really worth doing that process because then your students can be within your pro account as well. They get a lot more features and a lot more resources. Uh, and then you can also share things like templates and branded colors and fonts and stuff like that, which is just really useful for using it as, in a group setting as a collaboration tool. So um, all that sounds like it's probably perfect for designing your book spreads, but there's actually a lot of reasons why I think it's probably not your best bet and you should stick with a program like Adobe InDesign, which is the industry standard for graphic design and layout publishing. Any magazine, any book you see on the shelf is going to be laid out through Adobe InDesign. Um, most likely, there's some exceptions always, but more than likely it was laid out using Adobe InDesign. So that's always helpful to teach your kids marketable skills. Those are programs that they will use in their future if they decide to stay with graphic design or layout design or publishing or they go into any field like that. Um, or using your publisher's design software. Most publishers have their own um, design software, either browser-based or something you download. And there's a lot of things that you can do in Canva, save them to your computer and then upload them into there. And that would be a better um, option for you. So without further ado, let's get into it looking at why I think it's not the best program for designing your entire yearbook pages. Okay, so here we are within Canva. This is a layout that I made um, just to kind of do some testing and see if this is something that's a viable option. And so upon first glance, I was like, maybe this is something that could be really useful because it does give you some options that you would see in another design program that would be perfect for printing. So the first one is this allowance around this edge here. So you'll notice there's a dotted line and then there's a little white space. That is your bleed allowance. And so if you go under file, you can actually show the print bleed, you can show margins, and you can show rulers and guides. So those are really helpful tools to be able to help orient your students into like what part of the spread they're working on. Do they need a bleeding element to go past the edge? How far does it need to go? So at first I was like, this is probably really awesome. Like that's a really good useful tool that it includes print bleed. The problem is that they're not editable. And so the print bleed I'm assuming is about a quarter of an inch here. Um, most publishers that's going to be fine, but it's really gonna depend on your printer and what their allowances are. And if you have to accommodate to something differently, you can't in within Canva. The other thing is the margins. While it's great that they have margins because you wanna be able to teach your kids like put all your content within the margins, your text boxes need to not go outside of them, that sort of thing. You can't edit them either. So this, depending on whatever size document you have, it sets the margins for you. So this is an 11 by 17 size piece of paper to mimic a eight and a half by 11 size book spread. And so I 
guess they feel like the margins on this size paper should be an inch and so they've put this dotted line at an inch and you can't edit that. That might be something Canva changes in the future, but as of right now, you can't edit those margins, which is really unfortunate because typically you don't want a full inch margin in your yearbook. Um, the other thing is you can't change the units, and so they're only in inches, and in graphic design, we typically are using picas, and so while picas obviously correlate to inches, you know, if you're teaching your students graphic design skills, that will be useful in the future. You wanna try and give them those that terminology and get them to be using picas. Um, it, also for your internal spacing, you know, a lot of times we use a grid or we use a, a pica as a unit of measurement of one pica is in between elements. And you don't have that opportunity here because you don't have a grid, you don't have picas, you don't have any of that. Um, then these purple lines I've dragged onto the spread from the uh, ruler. So you can click on the ruler and drag it down and you can put these wherever you want. Luckily they do kind of snap to other elements, which is helpful. Um, and so I had to kind of create this layout myself. And so I put a half inch border with margins right here. And then I put the gutter in the middle with a quarter of an inch um, allowance on each side of it. And then I added my columns, which was actually quite difficult to do because I wanted to make them evenly spaced and have them, you know, uh, e equally sized and use the space in between them equally. So I had to create essentially four boxes and then size them to the right size and equally space them. And it was just a little bit clunky. Um, but honestly, that's something that you would do in the beginning of the year maybe and never have to worry about again. So that's not necessarily a deal breaker if that was the only issue. Um, but then once I had all those grid lines on there, I started adding elements. And so I put like the dominant photo and then I put these other photos and you can definitely snap to those grid lines. So when you're creating a photo, um, a photo size, see, I just did it right there. If you're creating a photo and you're sizing it, it'll snap to that grid line, which is helpful. So you know that it's aligned. Um, but what you'll notice in that thing that I just did is when I went to go resize this photo and I clicked on what would be this handle to resize this photo, it actually grabbed the grid line itself and moved it. And you don't want your students to be able to do that. There's also no way to lock the grid lines or the margin lines. There's no way to mark the grid lines or the margin lines with different colors like you can do in other programs. And you don't really want to add a bunch of guidelines to create a grid because they'd be moving all over the place all the time. And so that alone, I think, is a really difficult thing um, about using Canva because we use these guidelines in order for our books to be consistent. So if you don't have your margins, you don't have you know your columns and your, your templates, you're really going to struggle for your students to be able to design pages that look consistent throughout the book. Now, if you are doing an elementary school yearbook or even some middle school yearbooks, um, and not that there's any differentiation really between types of schools, but you know, typically those books we see less consistent pages. So this might not be the end of the world and it might be something that's worth your time if it's that easy to use. But if you are looking at doing something that is journalistically sound and is more of a publication that has a consistent look and feel, it has a theme, you know, you're teaching your students those, those skills, then that's something that you really want to pay attention to and you need your students to be able to um, work within without having it just be so easy to grab this grid line and move it, right? Um, luckily, it does have version history, so you can control Z like crazy and you can back up a bunch. Um, so far, insofar as you have not closed out this window, it does restart every time you reopen the document, but you know that's with any document, so that's really not a big deal. Um, but you you don't want to lose with the progress you've made because you moved this grid line, right? Um, the other thing that I think is really challenging within Canva is the typesetting. So I'm going to zoom in here because I want to show this story. Typically in stories, we have maybe two columns. And so I had to create these as separate text boxes and then just put them side by side, which is going to be really difficult when you're editing your story to get it to flow cohesively and, and smoothly into this next this next text box because you're literally copy and pasting text. Things are bound to get missed. Things are bound to get duplicated and it just makes it really messy. Um, they do have a lot of features for editing um, your stories, which is nice. Uh, this might be locked. Okay, you can lock the entire spread, which is nice, but it's just as easy as hitting unlock right there. There's no like permissions for different people or anything like that. 
Um, but they do have a lot of options for story uh, for text formatting. So you can change the letter spacing, you can change the line spacing. Um, these aren't using terms like kerning and letting that I would like to see. Those are things we want to be teaching our students. Um, but it is also really intuitive and it makes a lot of sense. So students really understand this pretty easily. You can change that sort of stuff really easily. Um, so that's nice. And it also does have a lot of fun fonts and colors that you know you can create some really beautiful designs with but i wouldn't design everything within the program for those reasons what i would do though is design elements within it so if there's a font that you really want to use that your publisher's design program doesn't offer you can design things like this within the design with that within canva and then export them as pngs and upload them into your design software so I'm gonna create a new page just to kind of show you um, where I'm going with this. I'm gonna delete all these grid lines. I think, can I? I can't. Okay, let's just create a new document actually. Uh, we'll do it as a, uh, what do I want? A flyer. Um, one thing that is really important if you are creating documents within Canva and using it in this way is your beginning canvas size is the most important. If you do something like this, which is an Instagram story, and you export it, it's gonna be in your book so, so tiny because it's uh, created as a resolution for web and it's not gonna be high enough resolution for print. So whenever you're selecting your canvas size here, you wanna make sure that you're picking something that's made for print. So typically I'll do a custom size, don't do it in pixels, do it in inches, and then do whatever size you need it to be. So I'll typically do like the whole page, like eight and a half by 11 or nine by 12, and then I'll put my elements on it. So this is an eight and a half by 11 document and it's made for print already. And then create your, your design. So say you wanna have like a really cool font um, and you have an accent word, um, well, we'll just say it's one word, uh, on your page and you don't have this font in your design program. Uh, you can actually also upload fonts into Canva, which is really nice. So my like organized advisor font is right here. And so if you want that word in whatever your branded color is, you know, um, you can do that within Canva and then hit share, download. I always do a transparent background because otherwise this whole thing's going to be white. And then when you download it to your computer, that is going to be a picture that you can use. It is going to be an eight and a half by 11 size document. So you have to crop it, but you're able to create little elements like that. The other thing that I think is really great about Canva is that it does have a ton of resources in terms of elements. So if you guys are using like icons in your book and you need them to be created and you don't want to like hand create them yourself, um, you can use Canva to find these icons and then export them and upload them into your design software, which I think is really useful. And with the pro account, you have a ton of options, uh, way more than you have with a free account. And then the last thing that I really think is useful is the cutouts, which is a, I have a whole other video about, but it's really easy to just uh, upload your picture, hit background remover, and then it does this process depending on your internet and how many people are on it. Um, it, does, it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds to do the cutout. Um, it's not perfect, but I will say it's probably 90% perfect. Um, this one, you can see there's like grass on him, so that's not gonna look great. But as long as your photo is in focus and it has a pretty good contrast with the background, and it doesn't like cut a limb off or something like that, it does a pretty good job. Um, and just to show you, even though you can definitely watch the other video, if I make the background a color, you can see how good that cutout really is. Um, and you know, you could put this anywhere you wanted to in the book. So um, that is a couple of things that I think would be really useful for Canva. Um, unfortunately, I just don't think that a layout like this is going to be the most, it's not gonna be very easy to do but I wouldn't say it's impossible. I would just say you're probably better to put different elements in Canva, export them, and then put them together kind of like a puzzle inside your design software. So I will put the link to this template in my description box below. So if you want to look at it or you wanna play with it and see if it's something that you might be interested in tinkering with, then um, you're definitely welcome to do that. But if you design parts of your yearbook or maybe even your whole yearbook using Canva, I would love to hear your experience. Canva actually started as a yearbook company, which is funny. So I think that there is a long way they need to go in order to create 
that to be a little bit easier, but I don't think that it's impossible. So I'd love to hear your experience or your opinion. Um, so leave me a comment below and I would love to chat with you. So that's it for today. If you need anything at all, please reach out. You can hit the contact us button on the website or you can just shoot me an email. It's Katie, K-A-T-I-E at organizedadvisor with an E-R.com. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.